Happy New Year. Happy New Beginnings. New Beginnings. We, I think we've officially, we are officially in the new year according to the Ethiopian calendar. Okay. Yeah, what which was, was that then? I think that's the 7th or the 8th of January is when their calendar said it's the new year. Oh, okay, cool. And as so some of definitely... us might know, that's where the original calendars, you know, get it from. You know, all the Gregorian calendars are the ones we oh, work right. with. Oh, right. Or the Christian calendars, because we know the original Christians were from Ethiopia, black people from Ethiopia and all of that. That don't doesn't get acknowledged much. The Coptics. So their yeah. calendar, they say that the new year or Christmas or the new year is like, yeah, in January. Yeah. Seven, four, eight, something like that, yeah. So we've got to give credit where credit's due. Most definitely. <laughs> As I we think, do. Yeah, I think um, 2020 was the year of clarity, hopefully, for a lot of people. Mm. And just making it clear, I guess, uh, as Nubian people, that we're going to be loud and proud and mm. every excuse that we get or reason that we get to um, give kudos to the people that actually invented or were responsible for how these people conduct their technology, their medicines, everything, mm. is they have to give credit where credit is due. Yeah, man, yeah, man. It's fed up of, like, <laughs> being the minorities. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you actually are the majority. You know, you might be a so called minority. <laughs> oh my, yeah. No, I believe it's, people of colour, as they refer to us in all these different terminologies, like they actually we dominate the planet. You know, when you're talking about yeah. the global population, we yeah. are definitely the majority. You know, we're only minorities in places where we were, you know, kidnapped, taken to, and colonised, and all that type of stuff, and brought to. Yeah. We may be considered minorities in those places and spaces, but yeah. definitely not minorities as Mother Earth has produced those people. Yeah, like funny you to talk say that. Um, I was watching this thing on um, Eddie Nestor's "Not a Joke" podcasty thing, where they were saying that um, they want to start introducing Black History Month as Cultural Month. <laughs> do you have any thoughts about that yeah man let them do what they want let them do what they want man if they want to call it cultural month black history month you know everybody's month you know if you're dependent on them to give you your culture and stuff they can do what they want with it but i always highlight it for myself you know i, I live a black history life yeah not a, not a month not a day not a week or you know whatever else is offered to us and i've always encouraged myself my people around me to celebrate yourself all day every day you know and um, don't wait for October in the UK or February in the States to you know acknowledge who you are so yeah. um, when the people who are basically creating these celebrations for you on your behalf yeah. they can call it what they want can't they I guess true you know that's so that yeah, is they, true. yeah. So, um, yeah, let them do. I've never really celebrated Black History Month, in, you know, in essence, personally, you know, like my children can vouch, you know, this is what I talk about all day, every day. Yeah. I've been to all day, every day. <laughs> so, you know, whatever day of the week or month or year is. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's true. And talking of um, celebrations and stuff, uh, was it on Instagram, <clears throat> Manhood Academy? Uh, D got nominated for like um I think it's like an influential like black male or something mm. like that. And mm. these were um I think previously um some really big hitters have have won that. Nice. So, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm proud of my brother because that's my bro for real. You know, we grew up together as uh -huh. teenagers since school age. And then we both, I know I'm He's been an inspiration for me and vice versa. So I want to see him doing what he does. Yeah. And there's always an inspiration still to this day. So yeah, man, hopefully he wins. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll be weird. That's a, an achievement. Yeah, but even if he doesn't, I think, you know, the, the reality is, you know, testimonies in the actions, man. And just the fact that he's doing it is credit. You give credit where credit is due. Yeah. You know, it's great to receive a trophy or a certificate or, you know, whatever it is that he might receive but you know 
as they say, as I would with others, you give them their flowers while they're here, you know, and yeah. I always let him know that he's, you know, he's, he's big in the game, man. He's big in the game, regardless. Yeah. You know, if he's so acknowledged quite, by others. I was going to say, um, it seems like quite a lot of your close friends are in a form of, A, their own business, and also doing something to, like, serve the community in some way. Yeah, man, I like I reflect on that quite a lot. And more recently, you know, because for the most part, we were um, suggested that we were going to be the failures, the, you know, the worst. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we, were the, we, we, were the wrong, we were the wrong people, hanging with the wrong crowd, doing the wrong things, you know, as young teenagers and stuff. And I've had many of people share directly to me, like, yeah, I thought you were going to be, you know, prison you know just doing the road stuff and yeah life and obviously I didn't and I'm not and um many of my friends I think went and had this path that we was on you know as a an experience that kind of gives us the qualification to yeah. then do the work that we're currently doing you know yeah. like that example of being you know like we all kind of work with young people or the community and you know work in that way and then there's many people, I guess, who have attempted, you know, when I say many, you know, being like the official authorities, like schools, yeah. you know, community centers and various other provisions that have tried to do that type of work. And they end up getting us to do the work because we're the ones who are actually qualified because we come from those places yeah. where the people that they're trying to serve come from. We speak the language, you know. So, yeah, man, like, I'm really proud of all my friends, like, even down to, like, the so-called worst of us that were really caught up in the, you know, in the streets yeah. and all that. Like they're, they're all, they've all slowly but surely come around and they're either, you know, you know, I, I say sometimes like we all started off as like wardens. Okay. You know, like basically we were hired by schools and stuff like that. <laughs> and we were security. <laughs> <laughs> or they might call you a teaching assistant <laughs> or whatever it is. They needed us to be in there to work with little Jerome, little Tyrone. Yeah. Even Miss Polly hard time <laughs> and she can't control them and then yeah. you know they're like yeah we need a Davis we need a Darren we need a Cypher yeah. we need you know a Marcy out there to yeah. find out the port us Reach and, them. yeah and then us being in these places and spaces I guess for the most part we realized that we were more the influencers that could make the change in these yeah. places but you don't get a less necessarily the right support or you know, at the end of the day, you're aware that, you know, if you're working in a school, school is set up and designed, not even designed to educate children anyway at the end of the day, you know, let yeah. alone, you know, really empower young people to be, you know, the best versions of themselves and stuff. So what you found, what I found, I did do and others is like... Oh, yeah, your yeah. mic, you need to, I think there's something wrong, wrong with your mic. Can you make it go higher? Because you're going low. Let me see what I can do. But, um, microphone. Yeah, that's better. Maybe it's just because you're talking lower. Okay. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so what we gathered, basically found out was that we're probably best bet in reaching those goals that we would like to achieve outside of the system, yeah. outside of the school, outside of the communities, and, like, create our own things and do it our yeah. way, and we can direct and choose the direction we would like to go in and take the young people, you know. So just like Davis Manhood Academy, you can take young people to the Gamb to the Gambia, you know. Yeah. Right, so passage program, but I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be able to do that if you was working yeah. in public school, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. We knew that, yeah, you know, you've got to kind of step out of that framework to get the real true results that are needed. Yeah, that is really good. Like you guys, it'd be so cool for you guys to do like a consortium, <clears throat> like a retreat somewhere where they have like on Mondays they've got Marcy with his healthy grind, the healthy mind, healthy grind, and then you have like my ecology with D. <laughs> yeah, man. You get what I mean? Yeah, man, it's uh, coming in it. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. It was written. It's been written in it. It was written. Oh, cool. Just getting everybody's on the same sort of page to schedule it, I guess, because mm. you, you guys are busy and all that. And I guess in the current climate as well, due to the fact that, you know, schools look like they're closing down and they're going to be non-existent in the very near future, 
you know, and things needed to go in digital and online and, you know, homeschooling and all these yeah. kind of things, which we, you know, I could definitely say for myself was a, you know, was a, a trendsetter for my generation, at least, you know, because my children were homeschooled. We set up a supplementary school and I was talking about it earlier on to somebody, you know, just as far as, you know, not being dependent upon the system and then, mm -hmm. you know, creating our own frameworks to do that. So, you know, we've been doing this for, you know, my, my oldest daughter's turned 19 yesterday, man. She was 19 mm -hmm. yesterday. So these were all concepts and ideas that we had before my children were born and they've been able to, you know, experience it to a degree when things weren't as challenging as they are now. But now yeah. more parents and more people realizing that, you know, they need to um, look at other options or alternatives. That's what they call it, alternative provision, you know, and yeah. things like that in the education system. But you know, in essence, it's the real education, you know, because education starts at home, you know, that's where yeah. it starts at the end of the day. So, yeah, there's there's a lot to be um, uncovered over these coming weeks, months, years, who knows how long it may be as far as education. And then on the flip side, we was having jokes about it yesterday, you know, like a lot of parents having to homeschool their children or their children studying at home now. And it's kind yeah. of a flip coin of either or they're finding out how stupid their children are or how stupid they are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, how, yeah. I don't know, like, <laughs> you're know, asking them questions and the parents ain't got a clue what the answer is. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> or you're, you're where your children are asking you questions, you're like, well, you don't know this. <laughs> <You're> like, <"Yeah." laughs> like, no. So, yeah, it's like a, a whole new experience that parents It like, is. Really I, I do, teaching. I feel for the parents, I'm not going to lie, I don't think. So it was a lot easier, you know, to kind of hand your uh, educational responsibilities to an institution. Mm. Now, it's like, if you're going to be engaged in what education they're providing for your child online, and you think, I don't like what they're learning, then it might kind of prompt you to say, you know what, I'm going to introduce this instead of what you're yeah it should you know it should all come yeah it should all come back home yes home is where the heart is <laughs> yeah, yeah, <mate. laughs> yes charity begins at home there's quite a lot of home phrases in it yeah man yeah man that's where so, it is man so i was gonna say like with regards to um like your talking slop series mm. is there like anybody um in particular that you let's say have you got three people that you'd really like to interview like in this coming year that you may not have booked already I might add yeah god <laughs> <laughs> a few questions for god yeah because you know be good. you can channel that <laughs> <laughs> you know like the same questions people have been asking for years like if I could get him on my show and ask him you know these questions that people are asking I think that would be yeah, that would be cool um but no if I'll be honest like and I was being honest with that last one but if I'm just be straight that um all the people that I've kind of had on the show in some shape or form have just been people who I think need to be seen and heard and there's no level there's no hierarchy okay. there's no yeah. preferences they've all been and will always be people who inspire me in some shape or form whether it's you know my new or major figures you know, in the game, some people, as you know, just people that I know from the roads. Yeah. And others are established, they're authors, they're, you know, they're known on their circuit. So I think all of them who I've dealt with have got something to offer. I'm really keen and excited about some of the recent interviews that I've done that are yet to be released. Okay. Um, that are just sitting in the archive and need to be chopped up and edited and stuff. Simply oh. because we're getting closer to, you know, um, what I wanted, to, what I set it up for in the first place. It was primarily about, you know, psychedelics and having people who look like the people who I deal with day in, day mm. out and come from the same communities and places and spaces that I deal with day in, day out. Just having those people talk about these subjects. And, um, you know, because I'm in the psychedelic circuit and I'm at the conferences at the universities and you know, all these major platforms and stuff mm -hmm. that they create. And um, I understand that the people who I primarily love to reach and engage with day in, day out, they're not at these places, you know, they're yeah. not at the places for multiple reasons. But, you know, it was like, well, how do we reach those people? You know, so it was like, mm -hmm. well, let's create, let's use the tools, the technology that's out there to be able to do that. 
which is the internet and stuff like that, obviously, social media. But um, because I'm aware of how influential music has been in my life and the role that music plays in these communities in, you know, waking people up, liberating people, dealing with their anxieties, depression. We all know what music can do for us in that regard. So to be able to combine the technology like social media, which everybody's into, along with music, I think is one of the main tools and keys yeah. that complement the psychedelic <laughs> as well. I think, yeah, I've done a couple of interviews recently with some artists, musicians, rappers, and producers that, you know, are pro-psychedelics, they partake in it, they rap about it and stuff. And I think mm-hmm. these are probably the more influential people or influences that could um, shift the consciousness of the people that I would like to reach more than Dr. So-and-so and scientist so-and-so who's got all the dats and dates, facts and data on, you know, the benefits of psychedelic, which is cool. But um, again, they just don't speak the language of the people, you know, where I come from. So yeah. we're able to have people like KT, the Arch Degree, who I've been releasing his ones recently, in fact. Although he's not a rapper, rapper, he does rap. And he speaks the rap language to the community. You know, I've got another brother called D-Rock the Menace, based in California. He recently, I've done a show with him and he's like, he's a mushroom guy, you know, raps yeah. about mushrooms and all that type of stuff. I mentioned to you earlier on, you know, I've done an interview with a brother called Kambata from the east coast of the states as well another rapper he's got a project out called lsd lunar solar duality and he's into oh, psychedelics and all that so i just know that yeah i just know what it makes me feel like and i know what it's going to make my people feel like when they hear and see it so to be to be able to connect with those guys and pull it off and um yeah i just think you know it's, it's a good look and the last one i done the other day was with a brother a social media guy who's kind of big on the um instagram called um, Illuminati Congo. Okay. And, um, that, that, that's like, I'm looking forward to releasing that one. Like, we yeah. Him, and like, he just, yeah, he just, he just came with my, he just came with the heat. So he's like, we talk slop and we dived in the shit, you know, and uncovered and unpacked stuff. And he's into, you know, he's into a lot, you know, but he's, you know, into breath work, he's into yoga, he's into psychedelics. And then you know, he looks like us, man. He does what we do. Yeah. It's just cool, you know, he's not a nerd, he's not a, you know, what a, you know, you know how sometimes when we do get our, these people present to us, it just, they just don't speak our language, man, but the last handful of people really speak the language of the people, so I'm looking forward to that, man, I'm looking forward to chopping them up and releasing those over the coming weeks and months. Okay, like, with regards to the um, <clears throat> interviews that you put out on YouTube, on your channel, mm-hmm. um, have you had any um, people that you've networked with um, or um, or have collaborated, no, actually, or have, like, um, given you information in the comments section that make you want to do more research or something? Uh, and this is from all the interviews that you've put up so far. Have you read any of the comments and thoughts right. so what you're gonna do you're gonna expose you're exposing me now for being the worst person on the internet <laughs> <laughs> for checking comments and replying <laughs> and all that stuff which i'm learning as a social media person you need to really be active and proactive with that so um i was saying to someone just the other day like i was oh i just realized on youtube there's been loads of people commenting on the videos and stuff <laughs> and i didn't see or use youtube for that tool you know for yeah. me like more facebook and instagram I'm, I'm more familiar with commenting and doing stuff yeah. like that but um youtube being one of them you know um i've seen a lot of comments recently that i just hadn't seen that have been on there for weeks or months now okay um and because of that it made me kind of check in and look on some of them and i think if i to, if i just can i can only go with the present like one of the recent posts that i made was um it wasn't a talking slot episode so to speak but I really liked the feedback from a, a picture that I posted of myself when I was at a temple traveling in Malta I was in Malta not too okay. long ago and um I posted a picture of me in one of these temples with the what they called the um stone age venuses of that period of time so there's these large excuse me stone figure goddess figurines you know okay. what day did you go on sorry I said, what day did you go to the temple on? At oh, Curiosity. Do you I, remember? Can't remember. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <it> <laughs> basically my time in Malta, I was there for 10 days. 
Okay. I've been there for 10 days. And in fact, yeah, and I went to this, that's the neighboring island goes though as well. So if you don't know, you or people, I just don't really deal with time and days of the week when I'm flowing. Yeah. Only if I've got work, a job, appointments yeah. that I feel like I literally just get up and go and flow. And then I realize, oh, this is the day of the week. This is the time that we're in, you know. I don't have lunch at this time. It's like when my belly talks to me is when I eat. And, you know, so. Ah, oh, that's, yeah. In that's Malta, I was, yeah, so in Malta, I was just able, I was just getting up every day and just flowing, you know. Um, what I do know that it was all around, um, when did I actually go? I'm trying to think that, yeah, because it's all, it's all a bit of a blur, but. Um, Last month. Yeah, I was there from the 19th of December. Okay. I arrived there, I think, yeah, 19th, 20th of December, and pretty much every day I was just going to different places and spaces, and, you know, oh. Malta's actually got some of the, for such a small island, it's got, like, an abundance of stone sites, temples, ancient wow. stuff, and like a really old as well, in some cases predating the pyramids and stuff like that. Wow. So um, every day I was somewhere doing something basically. So with that particular picture, I can't remember what day of the week I was and what I was doing. But to answer your question, when I posted that, the response, because I was dealing with the, the picture was to do with these, you know, the goddess figurines and I was doing my research and I highlighted that, you know, I'm doing some research and in the near future we'll be presenting on, you know, psychedelics and the Asian goddess. Um, you know, I've got loads of comments on there, man. And it was like very inspirational, you know, people were like, look, man, yeah, really looking forward to seeing and hearing what you want, you know, what your findings are. And, yeah. you know, and it inspired me more. Like, so, oh shit, I've got to actually go and do some <laughs> real research. <laughs> I've got to do some real research <laughs> and then put stuff together. Because, you know, I spoke before I actually put it together. But ironically, you know, just an hour or so before doing this, I actually confirmed the date. I'm going to be doing that presentation. Oh, cool. Psychedelic. So I'm going to I'm going to big you up to in a sec, but it's called psychedelics and the Asian and and the Asian goddess mysteries or something like that. Yeah. And I'm going to be doing it on Valentine's Day, February the 14th. Oh, fabulous! Yeah. <laughs> That's such an um, apt day, actually. Yeah. So I've got to try and get this out before then now, just so it will make sense. Yeah. Um, but. My reference point for that presentation was a presentation that I've only done once. Oh. And I've done it for you at your event when it oh. was, you know, psychedelics and the divine African goddess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it was off the back of that research that I was doing that when I went to Malta that I started to pick up on that presentation and stuff that I was doing there. So I'm basically yeah. going to be doing a rendition, an updated version of that mm. presentation that we've done whenever that was. We've done it, yeah. 2019, actually. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, wow. Um, yeah, so I'll um, be looking at the big busted, the big hit um, goddesses of the prehistoric periods <laughs> of <in> time <laughs> that you I find think, around um, the world. What was his name? Renaka, Renoko? Yeah, which, yeah, Renoko. He Rashidi. talks about um, the big bum, and the Yeah, man. So goddesses, big it's up. like, yeah. Yeah, because again, he was a major figure back in the days when I was a student studying, well, I still yeah. have students studying, but, you know, learning about this. He was, you know, one of the main teachers and players that inspired me to kind of learn more about the Moors, you know, Moorish yeah. history, the Black presence in early Europe, the Black presence in early Americas, him and a few others like Ivan Van Sertema, Wayne Chandler were big players in, you know, kind of delivering that information. And it's great that, you know, I was able to work with Renaka Rashidi, work with Rain Chandler, bringing them over to the UK and getting them to spread the spores, as I call it now, you know, just yeah. spread the knowledge and information. And I would just like to think that I'm just like with Kalindi and others, that I'm just kind of piggybacking off, you know, the, the foundations that they laid. I'm yeah. not actually teaching or uncovering anything new. It's already there. The, where I'm referring to is what I was taught by them. But yeah. the but is, or what I bring in addition to that is just, you know, basically the psychedelic spin and a newer, fresher pair of eyes looking at that information and kind of just looking at it from our perspective and sharing that with folks who speak my language. Yeah. Yeah, man. So with that, I'd say that, uh, like with your um, workshops and your talks and presentations and stuff under... Uh, the Darren LeBaron brand, because <laughs> you've 
it, that's what it is now. Uh, yeah. What can we expect from Darren LeBaron this year? This new 2021. Yeah, well, same old shit, different toilet, man. That's <laughs> we are talking slop, darling. Yeah. <laughs> Don't talk about that shit. <laughs> yeah, man. I always say when people ask me in journal, you know, like, what's this? Like, I mean, I've been reading from the same hymn book, you know, so yeah. to speak, since I opened my eyes, you know, when I first, you know, was curious about knowledge and information. And I, my, my tune hasn't changed, man. And like, you know, it's not because of Black Lives Matter. It's not because of yeah. Trump or any of these things that I now talk and share this stuff. This is what I was into from as long as I can remember from nursery. As you know, man, from nursery yeah. school, man, not in oranges and lemons and stuff. Like, <laughs> I've been curious and interested in uncovering stuff. So yeah. you're going to continuously see me doing that and delving deeper into the same subjects that I'm pretty much interested in, you know history, culture, you know, from a world, worldly perspective, you know, primarily psychedelics, as you know, now that's, you know, kind of what the, the flag that I, you know, that I really <laughs> raise awareness around. So I'm going to be just delving into that more and more and trying to deliver it in a um, more interesting way. So like, you know, we've got the talking slot that we do. I'm known for doing talks and workshops. I really would like to try and get more visual stuff going on, you know, like, visually complementing the work yeah. and also that will be on um you're right there yeah I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just need to come. but yeah i'm fine yeah um and yeah just getting stuff to visually complement the work that i'm doing i think that's kind of like a missing link or a gap that i could cover because um you know myself i'm a visual person i know that the generation coming you know behind me are visual beings they like to see stuff and they got you know as they say short attention spans and stuff Absolutely. like that so yeah creating short snappy witty visual content that then delivers the same stuff that i've been trying to say and share <laughs> since yeah. i put, you know, stood on my square kind of thing so it's just, you know it's just that more more of that stuff and you know the more i put stuff out there the more people then reach out to me and then give me ideas or inspiration around you know, like some some of the next steps. So there's no plan, there's no blueprint, so to speak, that I can say, yeah, this is what's coming up next or it's on the horizon. But what people will find out is you're just gonna find out about more people I'm connected to. You know, yeah. more people that inspire me. Like I said, I mean, you're gonna be like, oh, I didn't know he was into this, or I didn't know yeah. you these people. And it's like, yeah, because I'm gonna be talking and inviting those people onto the shows and onto you know the platforms that I'm on, and hopefully. So people just don't hear it from me, innit? That's the, that was one of the main reasons. Like, I've, I've got a lot to say, you know, I've got a lot of slot to talk and share, yeah. but I know many others have as well. And then when we do it like we do this, and all that other things come out of it. So I just want to give other people a platform as well, you know, to, you know, to share, share their slot. Yeah. I so I was going to say, talking, it would have been, because I know that um, you was in Jamaica last year, it would have been so cool if you could have got to talk slot well, I'm sure you did talk, I'm sure he wouldn't say that he was talking slop to you, but Sizzler. Yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. <laughs> I'm sure he would. But you know what I mean? <laughs> if it mm. could have been, like, televised or whatever, well, recorded. Yeah, well, um, funny enough, I've got some stuff in the archive, man. You know, there's some stuff oh, in the yeah. archive. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. man, it's just, you know, we're just, yeah, we're just patiently waiting for the right time, the right season, oh. and... Yeah, some of that will be released and put out there. You know, obviously, it's, I put out a few pics and stuff just to let people see that it's viable, that we can, you know, um, commune with those who you may not traditionally consider being into psychedelics. Yeah. And that's why I went to Jamaica. That was, well, not why, but that was one of the interests that got me over there. And as I said, music plays a big part. I don't know who knows about Sizzler, but he's played a big part in my life musically you know, through my coming up before, you know, right. that's what I grew up, those are the parties and the raves that I was going to, those are the, the women I was trying to dance, or the, <laughs> I was trying to dance with, you know, uh, you know, you had Sizzler soundtracks that went along with that, you know, as yeah. well as many other artists, so, you know, his, his music, his art resonates with me, so the fact that when I was in Jamaica, and big up Susie Sue, you know, I got a big R up as well, because she was my plug up, you know, I was and big up Tony, brother Tony in Manchester, because oh, yeah. both folks from Manchester that was able to then plug me into their contacts in Jamaica. And it was like, 
Susie was like, yo, I work with, you know, in the Sizzler Foundation. So he's got like a charitable organization, works with young people and all of that good stuff. She's like, look, we know you work with young people, so it'd be a good look for you to meet with him. And I was like, you know, he's definitely one of the people on my kind of hit list that yeah. I have that I like to connected with and, you know, make things, make, 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 make stuff happen. So she was like, yeah, we can make that happen. So I got the opportunity to go to Judgment Yard. That's the name of his, you know, his, his space and place where he okay. does his thing, makes his music, he's got a community there, you know, of soldiers who live there, build there and do what they do there. So I got the opportunity to go and meet. I was able to talk slop, you know, present yeah. to them, introduce them to mushrooms and what that's about and why there's a whole thing going on in Jamaica now with mushrooms, magic mushrooms in particular, psilocybin mushrooms, what that's about, and to bring awareness to that. And, you know, oh yeah, I was well received, man, and appreciated being able to share with one of my teachers again, because he's a teacher of mine, you know, whether yeah. he knew it or not, he was a teacher of mine through the music. So for me to be able to go and return the knowledge in my format and be received yeah. it was yeah it was it was yeah it was an honor so man I got to spend a couple of days there in you know in the space and you know by the end of it you know you I got the picture you know Sizzla holding the mushrooms you know he was like yeah man bring, <laughs> bring, bring the mushroom then in it bring the mushroom you know so yeah man it was all it was all blessed man. it was all blessed so yeah there's you know there's all things like that it's just as you know I call it spreading the spores man there's nothing at this stage is really solid you know especially in Jamaica is no different from in the UK and many other places where this is such a taboo subject, you know, mushrooms, yeah. psychedelic mushrooms, just mushrooms, not even psychedelic, just mushrooms, you know, yeah. edible mushrooms, you know, they call duppy umbrella, you know what I'm saying? It's oh, like, it? okay. it's all to do with ghosts and, you know, not good stuff, you know, not wow. positive, you know what I'm saying? And just like what we would say when you, t in the UK, when I talk about mushrooms, you're like, oh, you gotta be careful with mushrooms because they're meant, there's not many of them are poisonous and you can die from me. Like, that's yeah. the first thing a lot of people, when I first started getting into mushrooms, would say to me, and that's quite that, and even like 10 times even more challenging in places like Jamaica yeah. and other places in the Caribbean where culturally we, we don't engage in mushrooms, you know, let alone psychedelic yeah. mushrooms. So there's a lot of education needed and required before we get to a point where the same bring by the mushroom and you know, <laughs> start singing about the mushrooms and that. Baseline on it. Yeah, man. But you know, as long as you know the whole idea, what I've done or I'm trying to do with those people as well as just the elders in all communities is to raise the awareness of what these organisms are, what this technology is. Yeah. Sizzler doesn't decide to take mushrooms himself. Yeah. That may not be his thing, and that's not what I'm trying to get him to do, you know. But when people start bringing that up and bring that to the forefront, basically we're not going to judge them in Judgment Yard, for example. You know? <laughs> you know, we can, yeah, we can start having mature conversations about it. And that's what we was able to do while I was there. We were able to create a dialogue. They asked sincere, genuine questions. They were curious. And, you know, by the end of it, you know, there was brothers who were around saying, yeah, man, I've seen these mushrooms. They're just, they're pond in the, in the forest, you know what I mean? Just, they're yeah. pond in the see them things growing and boom, boom, boom. And they're like, yeah, but we just don't know what they are. So it was good to see that they do know what these things are yeah. in our two eyes. You know, they've seen them, but now they start to understand the value of them and that potentially they can, you know, feed themselves. They could potentially heal themselves. Yeah. These organisms that are growing in abundance in, you know, in the environment. And hopefully the Americans and Canadians and the British and the Chinese and the, whoever else is over there taking full advantage of that opportunity, um, they get to they get to you know get to some of the opportunities themselves and benefit from their own land. You know. Okay, I think um, I saw on your Insta as well that um, I think it was Insta or Facebook, one of the two, where um, you were being interviewed on a Jamaican radio station. Yeah, man, Nose Talk Radio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Big up Sue again. She we yeah, like, I hope she gets to see this, man. Because I, I mean, I told her and refer back. Like, she really, she, yeah, supported me with everything, man. Like, I went over there, you know, with like basically two empty hands and a laptop, yeah. you know, just tried to make shit happen. And she was like, I feel your mission. I feel the cause. And um, let me see what I can do, man. And she's a host. She hosts her own show on the same, you know, um, radio station. Oh, is it? So she was able to line up, line me up on like one of the popular shows on. Wow. That was being, yeah, being delivered on. Did you get a lot of feedback from that whilst you was in Jamaica? Um, yeah, enough, enough to let me know that it was worthwhile and that 
okay. again, what they was all saying is like, oh, you just need to come. Well, one, they was like, not even come back. You need to stay longer because more time was like, I'm leaving on this particular day, whatever the yeah. day. Like, oh, you need to stay longer because we can get you on this show or we could hook you up with this person and that person. Yeah. And when I was like, well, I'm going in a few days time, they're like, well, you know, just make sure that you come back. And when you come back, we can definitely get, you know, get things happening because they were aware. Because it's on the news now, man. It's not even like local news, yeah. it's like national news, like the role that mushrooms are playing, you know, in Jamaica. And, you know, and like I said, for the most part, we, you know, we're, we're they're not tuning in the people are not tuning in so mm -hmm. it was really clear on that radio station that they appreciated a brother coming from the uk over to jamaica to share yeah. that with them you know when yeah. there's people right on their doorstep that are benefiting from it and they're you know they're not privy to it so yeah it was weird it was well received and you know i look forward to returning and being able to spread more spores and hopefully build with them so you know make things actually manifest and materialize Okay, so I know you're saying like, um, like with regards to how you treat your days, um, where it's just a fluid thing, like you just kind of go where the wind blows you, as it were. Um, is that the same with like where you where you choose to go abroad? So Jamaica, you went there because you had your friend. There were some people that wanted to connect you yeah. so that you can spread information in Jamaica and then yeah, Malta. Jamaica was slightly different, yeah. So yeah, Jamaica was like so Jamaica was like actually a journey that I um not that I put off that I, I'd been invited to Jamaica like over the last two, three years oh. by several different people. You know, a handful of people have been like, one, do you know about the psychedelic movement or thing that's happening in Jamaica? You know, this is a few okay. years where it's all, you know, all paperwork at that time. You know, they've got oh, okay. a lot of talk about it. It's like, oh, do you know what well, this is going on in Jamaica? Maybe you could come over and see what's going on or get involved in stuff that's going on. And at that time, it just wasn't on my radar. Although I was pretty to it, it just wasn't on my immediate radar for like, oh, let, okay. me, let me go to Jamaica. You know, I had other people that were saying, you know, they're setting up permaculture farms. You know, as you know, I'm into food growing, organic yeah. horticulture and permaculture and stuff. So like we're setting up farms. Would you like to come over and work with young people and do stuff with them in farming? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there was different reasons that Jamaica had come up on my radar over oh. the years. And I was like, at that time, it's just not fitting into my schedule. It's not fitting into my budget. It's not fit okay. it's fitting for multiple reasons. And then Jamaica came up by way of me being able to just basically transfer a flight ticket. I was actually scheduled to go to Detroit for the Detroit conference. Um, oh. they had set up you know um, a few years ago and every other year that it takes place in Detroit it was the same year that he had made the transition just a few weeks before the actual conference itself but during that same period of time you know all this COVID corona stuff kicked in traveling to here there and other places became restricted yeah um, America was difficult to basically get access to without you know, getting tested and all, you know, loads of other stuff that was yeah. there were barriers basically in getting to the States. So I decided not to make that journey, which like, I didn't really, I wanted to be there and be present for the conference as well as for, you know, um, Kalindi ceremony and stuff. But yeah, yeah, it just didn't happen. So what that allowed me to do was have this credit. I had credit for a flight. Yeah. Um, because closely to that time again one or two other people like brother tony in manchester he hollered me and saying yo what's going on with detroit this that and he, i was like i'm not going and he mentioned jamaica again and then oh, i went okay. and done my googles and i'm like well jamaica doesn't have the same restrictions as america at the moment for allowing people from the uk to get there yeah. so i thought you know what like the money's sitting there on credit so to speak you know with the flight let me just transfer my ticket and I'll head to jamaica so I headed to, uh, yeah, I just went to Jamaica, basically. And um, Jamaica, like any other place that I would go to, regardless of what I'm being invited there to go to do, I always use the metaphor of, like, I just take my toolbox, man. As you know, I do, you know, several things as a teacher, an educator, a mycologist, you know, horticulturist, yeah. that and the other. So I may be invited to a place for something, like to yeah. set up a farm, let's say, a farming yeah. project, or to work with young people. But while I'm there or before I get there, I'm like, well, let me see if there's a psychedelic community. Let me see if there's a permaculture yeah. community. Let me see, you know, where's the, there's a music community. Where's the young people's provision and stuff like that. And yeah. let me just reach out and say, hey, this is who I am. This is what I do. And while I'm over there, I'll be happy to connect and just come and see what you're doing. If we can build in advance, I'm happy to build in advance. 
if you want to wait till I arrive and I'll just put it out there and just see yeah. what comes back and that's what I've done with Jamaica you know I had one or two things that was solid and then a few things were created in advance and then when I got there more doors opened so that, yeah that was how the kind of that manifested with Jamaica whereas Malta and I was recently in Rome and all these were kind of more you know inspirationally led to or led by the fact that I wasn't um, keen to stay in the UK under yeah. the current climate and circumstances. And once again, I just done my Googles, like where can I get to that will enable me to have a bit of freedom and liberation to do what I like doing that doesn't have yeah. the restrictions like some of the other places that weren't in lockdown or in tear, whatever it was and this, that yeah. and the other that I could go to wear a pair of Bermuda shorts <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, um, as well as do my research and connect and build so again I just bring my toolbox with me man you know yeah. I had a few people that I knew had stuff going on there and I just reached out and say look man I might be popping over your way and um, if I do you know is there anything I can do <laughs> or is anything need to be done yeah and, you know no problem you know I still just enjoy the sun and the beaches and do some creative stuff and get on with what I would be doing you know in London in lockdown sitting in my apartment or my flat you know what I'm saying yeah. a lot of the times it's just inspirationally led sometimes it's political you know what I'm saying <laughs> I end up in different places and some of them is just like yeah these are places that I want to go man I'm passionate about going to these places and I want to get there and to be honest as a child or into my young adulthood I didn't get the opportunity to travel man you know my, yeah my mom my family couldn't afford you know, we went to Margate and stuff like that. On, with the, with the <laughs> on the coach. Yeah, with the load. With other families in your hamper because they didn't want to pay for any of the food that was available at the seaside because it was too expensive. All so of that stuff. your man. cold chicken and fish. Yeah, so, you know, I've taken full advantage of, you know, I know some people, you know, are challenged by it, but I take full advantage of those kind of low-budget flights and stuff like that, and mm. I take a backpack with me. So I pay the minimum extra duty yeah. on the, with the bags and stuff. Uh, as long as I've got a laptop or my phone, which I know allows me to do the communications and work that I will be doing in the UK, it allows me yeah. to go and explore and do things I just wanted to do as a child, man, and yeah. go to these places that I'd never been to before. And, you know, you never know how much time you're gifted here in this place. Yeah. So I just, like, I'm just, I've just been going for it, man. I've just been going for it because I don't want to live or be on my deathbed and have regrets like oh, I really wanted to go more to see them big busted big hits figure <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't go you know and yeah. like or, you know just like what's stopping you and that's what I always look at at this stage in your life what's stopping you and you as you would know you know a few years ago I was teaching in schools and that's you know like pretty much like a full-time commitment of being yeah. there and the times when schools are not you're not committed to school that's when all the prices for flights go up and stuff yeah yeah and it's like it wasn't always easy so I stepped back from my work teaching in schools to be able to give me that freedom to go around and just you know if somebody says do you want can you be here at this time this day I can be like yeah I can because most of my work I can do on a computer and I can be in yeah. as long as there's a wi-fi connection and I don't even need a wi-fi connection no more because as long as you've got your phone you've got you've got personal hotspots in it and stuff yeah like, your personal hotspot and stick get online so like yeah I can, yeah, I can yeah, do yeah. it's a good it's a good work life balance as well I guess because then you just get to do what you're doing and it sounds like you incorporate when you're going to these places to tie into your your work somehow like mycelium <laughs> just yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I, couldn't, I wouldn't do it any other way I, like it's rare for me to just think oh I'm going on a holiday like I'm just going for a holiday it's like it like this if I don't know this place I'm going to find out something about this place that gives me some interest in it when I go there I've got some research to do you know and like go there and do some investigations yeah okay I'm always on it like that okay cool I was going to ask you what well, how are you thinking what are your thoughts sorry on um all this stuff that's going on in America with um <clears throat> them storming storming Capitol Hill Capitol Hill yeah yeah, yeah. It's like funny. do you have any thoughts about that matrix stuff yeah I try and, the, personally the I try stuff. not to entertain it or allow it to distract me but um, it comes up a lot just being on social media being present present on there and then you know you just log in and you start seeing the feeds and stuff coming coming through 
And funny enough, I spoke with somebody based in America like the following day. So I didn't know what was going on until I spoke with them. Oh, do you know what's going on in America? I was like, no. And they told me, then I saw, and you know, it just like again, I don't know the intricacies, you know, but what I do know is what I feel most of the time, like life is, and definitely the politics is like a stage. It's like a yeah, stage, man. It's a a TV show. And um, I really do think that that was evident from what I've seen with that, that it was very much um, not as um, real. Yeah. It might have been presented to the masses. And I guess a lot of people feel the same way, you know, as I've seen loads of memes now floating about, you know, I don't know if you see the one with the brother, it's like an African brother, I think it is. And he's like, you know, when the Trump's people stormed Capitol Hill, what the, what the police and the security were like, is like, oh, you've come to march or protest, you know, come on in. <laughs> it, was like, it was more like an invitation to, yeah. to do it. And, you know, the common thought that I was picking up from the mouse people was like, you know, I'm sure it wasn't not too long ago that there were supposedly like peaceful protests for Black Lives Matter out and around those same places and spaces. And, you know, people who were just sitting there doing nothing but sitting there were getting tased and wow. around and you know abused by the police they didn't even try to get through the gates you know but <laughs> <laughs> were being harmed and in this case there were people you know offensive <laughs> and climbing and bossing things down and smashing shit up and they were they was allowed you know it's permitted so that in itself is an indication for me of like stage so I'm a thing that I've always seen when I put on the TV in my kind of mature, I don't even say mature since, you know, I was privy to this type of stuff, you know, that, yeah. you know, I always used to think things like, I found out from my mum when I was a child that, you know, you know, like when people go out to protest, yeah, march and stuff like that, that they've got to get permission, they've got to get like a license or a permit. Really? To march and protest, yeah, from the councils or the local provisions and I'm like well what kind of protest or marching is that? Anarchy. <laughs> I'll go and ask for permission to do it you know and wow. you know and it's got to be done all politically correct to you know to to air your voice or to share your you know your anger so to speak <laughs> or <your> frustration <laughs> <Schedule it> in. <laughs> yeah basically like, <laughs> that's not what I thought growing up it was about I thought like that's like people sitting in the house saying, let's get out there, let's go. Yeah, out there. that's like... <laughs> Go out there and they go and do it. And I guess when you go out there and go and do it like that, I've seen in history what kind of happens. Yeah. You know, like those people, you know, don't survive. I remember as a child, I always remember, is it like Tiananmen Square? It was in China with the students okay, yeah. protesting. And I remember tanks, from what I recall, like cut turning up and like, it looked like they were running over students. You know, yeah. to run over the students with tanks and stuff as a, <laughs> as a young I don't even know if I was a teenager them times I would have been oh, like 10 yeah. 11 12 but just seeing that I just think whoa and like for me that seemed like a real protest like they were yeah. and that I'll, I'll gather that's what happens when you really protest yeah so for all the other marching and protesting that I've witnessed over the years that's been permitted because you get the permit to do that I guess that the powers that be don't consider that such a threat or a problem or it's not going to make the changes that those people would like because yeah. they're permitting it because if it was really going to make the shift and the change and yeah. you know overthrow the forces or the powers that be they would be like they were in China and they'll pull out the tanks and stuff and do stuff that doesn't you know look nice and feel nice so um, what I've gathered is that what's um, happening or happen is that we've got social media and the media in general that are bringing this to a wider audience yeah and uh, what frustrates me you know if anything is you know, I, I received a text and some messages on you know social media and people always asking kind of like my opinion on things you know about stuff like that and I'd always yeah. think my opinion is the same as it was 20 years ago you know like just because this is happening now you know, this era it hasn't changed you know and you know, um, you know, do Black Lives Matter? You know, like they've always mattered to me. You know, they've always. Been. <laughs> it's like, Basically, it's not, it's not because, they just put a name to it. <laughs> yeah, you know, like if you're using that terminology, and I've always represented in that way in my, you know, mm. my school of thought. And you know, and then you know, in the psychedelic community, it came up the other day. You know, there's a lot of, you know, 
people would say like a lack of representation of people of color in these areas. And they're saying, you know, you as a, an advocate for people of color, not that I've ever considered myself an advocate for people of color with the psychedelic community. That's not who I, that's not who I'm saying I am. But, um, mm-hmm. but because I'm looked upon or in that way by some people, they would like to think, so what do you think about, you know, the lack of representation of people of color or black people, you know, in the psychedelic community? And I say, oh, the same way I think about it in education, the same way I think about it in politics. Yeah. Like, it's well, like the same shit, different toilet, mate. You know, yeah. it's like, this is what I've witnessed pretty much my whole life. So um, I'm going to be just, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. That's what was, you know, frustrating me more that I'm just, feel like I'm just repeating myself no matter what subject what area we're talking about Mm -hmm. the same models that exist in the political framework that prevent people of color from getting access and getting a true service is the same challenges I found in the food growing community wow (laughs) people of color don't get access (laughs) it's the same structures that I found in the psychedelic community it's the same structures I found in education it's the same models the same structures are designed and delivered it's the same models in all of these yeah areas. the like, same like, blueprint like, yeah same shit, different toilet me yeah. so um what am i saying i'm saying the same thing that i would have said 20 years ago 10 years ago and now that i think that more diverse communities are becoming aware of what's going on and they're like oh shit i didn't know this was going on oh you didn't know that black people including myself have been abused by the police before you know <laughs> You know, like, yeah, my incidents weren't put on TV. I didn't report it, you know, and go to the courts and go all that route. And I'm just putting myself in that example because I'm just saying that that's how close to home it is, you know. And yeah. Oh, don't you remember Rodney King? <laughs> you know, whether that was staged or not is another, you know, it all depends because there's a thing. Yeah. Like, again, oh, do you not remember Stephen Lawrence? I grew up, you know, like, are you talking about injustices that I've just witnessed and seen my whole fucking life basically happening in and around me and seeing that nothing has been done about it? Yeah. And that the people that are put on trial get away scot free or don't get put on trial if, you know, if they're caught, all those kind of things. So, yeah, it's the same challenge, the same frustrations that I've witnessed since I was, you know, yay high and see now. So, to go back to the point, Capitol Hill, I just think it's interesting that, yeah, you know, and um, there's a bunch of um, people protesting and writing. I don't know if they had to get a plug <laughs> to, do it, to do it this time around, but yeah, they, they kind of got away with it. And in one side, you know, just observing, I just think he's great, man. I just think he's great. Just to see, like, and I just to see. Yeah, just, you know, from, just from a perspective of, you know, that, oh, shit's just crumbling. Shit's just not yeah. as solid as, you know, as we think it is. And that's how I've always, felt since I've kind of matured that you know it's like it's a facade you know so you know it's not it's, yeah, it's not really real you know the presidents the prime ministers and all of these kind yeah. of models and frameworks that we use have never really meant much to me you know I don't know I had this saying there's two things that always came to mind when it came to politics and that's when I nipped it in the bud um, one of them was written in Homer and High Road anybody's from East London and those Homer and High Road but like, oh, it was written outside, it was spray painted on the old madhouse. You know, the people where they send people when you used to this go mad. Oh, yeah, and I'm in my road. Yeah. Um, in East London, the borough of Hackney, I'm sure it's not there now, but I took a photograph of it. And it said, the quote was, if voting changed anything, it would be illegal. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember just being a young teenager seeing that. I was like, all oh, right, on with that. And, um, and in my first schools of consciousness which was the nation of islam you know okay. by way of public enemy and ice cube but those are my inspirations and they in- introduced me to nation of islam khalid muhammad malcolm x and farrakhan all that type of stuff so i used to go to the classes and in one of the classes the one of the um, brothers shared he said something along the lines but not something like he shared exactly it goes up voting or choosing between labor liberals or the conservatives is like a choice between satan the devil or lucifer <laughs> all one in the same so between that statement and if voting change anything it would be illegal i was like i knew where i stood when it came yeah to and to this day i've never voted for anything that's political in that day i don't feel the way 
I get told by you know my family I get told by people outside of my family that yeah. I'm wasting votes and people fought for our right to vote and all of those things there and I appreciate their perspective but that's just not my perspective yeah so um yeah so going back to Capitol Hill and the shifts and the changes if this makes a change or a shift in people's consciousness I think that's where real change takes place yeah so if you witness what happened in Capitol Hill and you feel oh, that's a joke it's yeah. not real it's not you know it's you know they let them in and stuff like that that should shift your consciousness to not really believe or buy into that anymore and hopefully you will then look at well how can I really make a shift how can I really make a change and I think real change real shift starts within and that's yeah. it always has started and changed and if you can do that and if these things make you do that then it's all to the good so with that thought during last year with all of this um pandemic stuff going like how has your approach to your life changed or has it, if it has? Like with, oh. with everything that they say, like all of the, you know, information. I, I put that in inverted commas as well. The information that they've got out there and like restricting people's movements and stuff, like um, the way that you approach your life, has it, has it changed in, your perspective or you've just been doing what you've always done no, I definitely it hasn't changed my perspective you know what has changed is that yeah I and that's what I always say you know there's a lot of conspiracy theories and stuff and I've been into that you know when I first got into consciousness that's where you know yeah. and the internet opened up I was into that stuff so I'm going to jump and move around a bit I think to answer it but um I always felt that I don't get caught up in stuff now in this stage of my life unless there is an actual barrier that I face in doing what I need to do. Okay. So if it's not stopping me from doing what I actually need to do, really need to do, I don't give it too much attention or too much energy because it doesn't serve me well. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I always give the examples of like, there was a time when I was into, you know, like the Illuminati stuff, like chemtrails and, you know, there's yeah, loads yeah. of stuff out there. And then I understood within myself that, if I can't stop them planes flying up in the sky, if they are zigzagging and crisscrossing and doing whatever they're doing, shifting the energy and making it hard for us to breathe and creating climate change and making fake clouds yeah. and <laughs> fake weather and stuff like that. If I can't actually do something about it, I'm not going to give it that much attention. Yeah. What I will give attention and serve is the things that I can shift and do, you know? So that's how I felt about this current situation, you know, is yeah. I apply it in the same way. So the fact that now, in this day and age, yeah, it's restricted me in being able to move from A to B in some cases, so it affects me personally. If they're saying that you've got to wear a mask and you've got to get a vaccine and all these things, and it affects me directly, then I'm going to be in onto it. I'm going to be onto it and yeah. see, well, what is it? Is it preventing me from doing? And can I work my way around? Now I'm going to give it attention, basically, yeah? Okay, yeah. So um, if we go to, all right, so what is this thing and how is it affecting us? So when it first came out and they first put it out there, no, I just thought it's another thing that they do, another cycle. It's another, I've seen it happen before in history, you know, and um, I'm not going to give it too much attention or serve it if it's not serving me. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think one of the main things that have come out of this that has affected me, it's restricted me in being able to go from point A to point B because they're doing all this kind of lockdown stuff, yeah? Yeah. And without sounding cocky, you know, with it, but like, if I can get out my house and walk out my front door and the police don't stop me from getting where I need to go to, yeah. that's just kind of how Darren operates or functions, you know, and because of the nature of my work as an essential worker and all those types of things there, I, I, I can still move freely. I will work my yeah. own businesses and I'm gonna, I have to... Re as being self-sufficient, I've got to kind of travel and get from point A to point B to continue my work. So I'm actually eligible for moving around and getting around. And it doesn't actually stop me from doing what I've got to do, you know, on, you know, on, just on a mundane level, like, yeah, that's it. That's what I'm trying to give you to, to kind of share some stuff with you. You know, if we look at the mask, that's another thing that I'm not feeling. I don't want to wear a mask, you know? So until I go out <laughs> my house, yeah, somebody, by law or by force is saying you need to wear a mask or you can't do this or you can't go here or you can't go there I'm not going to wear a mask just yeah. but if I decide that I want to get on a plane to go to a particular place and they're saying that to get on a plane to go through these places you've got to wear a yeah. mask 
I'm yeah, gonna wear a mask. <laughs> Why? Because I told you keep it real. Back in the days, I don't know, you're from that area. Do you remember when we used to wear ski masks? Yeah. That was a trend. That was a fashion was, back in the days. Yeah. We used to wear yeah. our starter jackets, put our hoodies on, <laughs> and wear ski masks. I like that. that didn't happen for me, you know. So I've just got I just look in my world, like in my mind, in my world, I just look at if I need to do what I need to do, I know what I need to do. I just yeah. know, like I know how to play the game kind of thing. My world, you know, I know how to play Mario world. And if I'm Mario, I just know what I've got to do to get where I need to go to. And if yeah. it compromises my principles, if it compromises who I think I am or what I need to do, and I'm going to do that. And I'll be like, no, I ain't doing it. And I'm going to, you know, not be on it, so to speak, because I'm not going to go beyond, you know, pushing my boundaries and my principles that make me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. So mm -hmm. That's just how I operate on a day-to-day -day vibe. And that's why I wouldn't allow it to affect me in the way that it may affect others. And I think that's mainly because they watch a lot of TV, they believe in what the media is saying and all that type of stuff. So if we bring it round to like the main thing that I think people are talking about when it came to this COVID thing, the two things I remember most importantly was 5G. That was how yeah. it started. I don't hear many people talking about 5G anymore. That's one thing I will say. Because <laughs> no. so there's a new strain of COVID, that's why. Because yeah. I remember my mum telling me as a child, you know what, Aaron, people forget. She always used to remind me that people forget like, and that happened on a TV show, you know, there was like a TV show, a famous one in the UK. And on that show, one of, the, one of the main characters was a rapist. He used to abuse children. And it was like years later in the same show, he was like a good guy. And <laughs> me, don't you remember a couple of years ago, he was abusing a kid, like, you know, physically abusing a kid on this show. And now he's like, he's all right. <laughs> and then she reminded people forget, you know? And I was like, yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. So with that said, yeah, I don't know if people forgot about 5G and the towers and all this stuff that is connected to Corona and the vaccine and this type of stuff. So um, I'm saying that to say as well, the 5G was a thing, again, I mean, 3G was a thing when it came out. Do you remember when they said, <laughs> oh, I don't, no, I don't, no, I don't want to sound too, you know, flippant, but it's like, I can't get caught up in those things if it doesn't serve me well, as I said. So until 5G a something to me or people around yeah. me, I'm going to keep moving, man. I've got, you know, I've got my own missions. I just stay focused on my missions. I'm going to keep moving and grooving how I do. But with that said, vaccines is then like is the main thing that's yeah. being spoken about now. And um, I feel the same way about vaccines as I did when I got into this path that I was on when I was in my early teens. And to give you an example, I've got a 19-year-old daughter and I've got a 17-year-old daughter. None of them have had vaccines. They didn't even get the vitamin K drops that they get oh, really? with babies. So I'm just saying that to say that yeah. I've not been down with vaccines from like two decades yeah. now. So now that they're talking about vaccines, like, yeah, I want to take it then and I want to take it now. Like, <laughs> whatever vaccine is, like, it's not, it's just something that I just didn't entertain, you know what I'm saying? So it's not a big thing. To, it's not a big thing to me. It's something that I've been privy to personally. And I know people around me also that have felt the same way for, for, for a long time. And I, I pulled it out the other week. I'm not at my home, so I can't do it right now. But I've got a book that I purchased when I was probably about 17, 18 years old. I'm in my 40s yeah. now. I purchased this many moons ago, and it was called Vaccines Are Dangerous by Curtis Cost, an American okay. author. Vaccines are dangerous. I was into this stuff way back, not to, you know, blow my own trumpet, as they say, but just to say that I just weren't down with vaccines. Once I got that book, realised what it was. I was fortunate enough to not have vaccines as well. My mum was conscious enough to not for me not to delve into that realm and when they was in school giving everybody this the bcg jab yeah i skipped school that day something my spirit told me don't go for it and i bunked off and i didn't want to go for it and i didn't get that bcg jab so it was just something in me something that i felt something that i researched that made me feel nah that's not that's not for me and yeah that was then and that's now but for those of you who have had vaccines and now waking up saying oh Maybe this vaccine is dangerous. It's like, I just thought they all, they're all dodgy. They've always been dodgy. But I think McDonald's is dodgy. I think kebabs are dodgy. I feel like <laughs> there's loads of dodgy stuff that affect us in ways that we don't think are, you know, dangerous to us, but really have been changing our genetics and our DNA and been messing with our biological cells for a long time. You know, Coca-Cola, man. I've seen all these, these things are vaccines in some way, yeah. you know, are hazardous to our well-being have changed who we are i know this because it rots your teeth you know and stuff like that and if you weren't conscious of that then you know 
and it's only now that you're waking up, then I respect that. But if you knew back in the days that these things weren't good and not bad, then just stand in your square and don't take the vaccine and do what you've got to do. And if you can't travel, because you've got to have the corona passport, as people are saying to me, and it might be yeah, I heard that as well. This type of stuff, then. Oh, like, I don't know. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm in space. So you, you just better know some some Nigerians, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, how it rolls come from. You when, know what I'm <laughs> whenever we're back to the corner, like as a society or community or whatever, um, there's always way, there's always loopholes. There's, found, there's loopholes in everything, and um, when like I, I think. I was, I saw one of my phone feeds, um, this person getting arrested for charging an elderly person, I think 300 pounds or something, between 160 and 300 pounds to get a fake vaccine. (laughs) (laughs) It's not funny, it's not funny, but you know, um, there's there's ways of being able to do stuff, that's just the nature of Sis, you come from the streets, not that you was the streets hustling and weeding, but we come from the roads, didn't we? We know the lifestyle. And what I've observed in my life as a teenager, being conscious of the streets to this day, is that the more they clamp down on a particular law or a particular thing, all that happens is that criminals get smarter. They just lose their game, innit? So when they introduce CCTV, you couldn't go into a bank and say, give me the money. That's how they used to do it, put on a band of clover. (laughs) Yeah. Give me all the money. The good old days. <laughs> you can't do that now because they've got CCTV. When yeah. they give you the money, it's got all the spray dye thing in it. Criminals just up their game, innit? It's like, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm not here promoting criminals and stuff, but <laughs> I just know that that's the way and the nature of life kind of thing. Yeah. So you just, yeah, it just depends where you fit in, in, the, in this kind of grand scheme of chess. You know, are you a pawn? Are you a bishop, a knight, yeah. king, queen? How do you manoeuvre? and navigate these spaces and places. And if you feel that you don't want to get a vaccine, if you feel that you don't want to break the law and do anything dodgy, then just know that you're going to, if you're in the UK, that is that, yeah, you're just in an open prison. That's how I've always thought the UK was, you know, it's an island isolated from the rest of the land of Europe. And you're not going to be able to get off the island unless you build Noah's Ark, (laughs) build yourself a plane or something. (laughs) And go against the grain, you know, like, and if yeah. you're not prepared to do that, then you're going to be on the island, isn't it? As, and that's kind of like what the direction that it appears that like they're heading in or they're suggesting. And even if they're not heading in that way, all the conspiracy theorists and all the people from we're saying that, that's what's yeah. going to happen. So therefore, we're going to create that reality. We're giving them those ideas, <laughs> you know. Um, like, if they weren't thinking about it, they're going to be like, oh, this is what we need to do. And it's like, yeah. we're, we're kind of headed in that direction, I feel. So, yeah, you, as I said, you need to kind of be a true anarchist, you know, a true liberator. I like I said, know some Nigerians or some guys who could do something for you on your behalf that enables yeah. you to look like you're playing the game correctly kind of thing. So, yeah, man, it's not a cool thing that we're in these positions now, but I think I'm fine, man. Be on your P's and Q's, think on your toes, or on your feet, as they say, and be prepared for do things as my great brother Malcolm X says by any means necessary. Ah, oh, don't we love that? That just sounds like innovation to me. Yeah, <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. By any means necessary, we could just kind of maneuver and but um I'd say um so from your like a a summary of what last year was like for you. Um, what would you say were your biggest achievements for yourself last year? So um, I've said this with a few around of you know around within my circle. Yes, last year was really challenging for me. Two main reasons. The two main reasons was that my father and my elder Kalinde both made a transition seven days apart. I've never had anybody that close. I've not had a family member that close to me make the transition. And I've not had such an influential figure like Kalinde or I was make a transition in my life that I was so tightly connected to. So that was my biggest challenges of the year and still filter through in different ways. But with that said, they were both major fuels as well for me. Mm-hmm. And um, it fueled and inspired me to do what I do and because of COVID, Corona and, you know, the restrictions in work and stuff, it gave me a lot of time to evaluate 
me yeah. and myself and I and um, like you would know and I know you appreciate me speaking the other day I spent a lot of time in the forest <sighs> so if you was to ask me what was the biggest achievement it's going to sound really weird to most people but it was I discovered my toes sis yeah you discovered your toes your toes <laughs> five toes on each tree <laughs> You discovered your toes and what was the significance of that? So I was in the forest and appreciating organic technology and I really and because I was going through that phase of the transition of both you know those key players in my life and then um, being in the forest using that organic technology along with the organic technology that the forest provides it allowed me to connect with my own technology even more so and um, the body, the, just the, the body that I've got and my toes spoke to me and reminded me how they serve me and what they've been, they've allowed me to walk and get to Jamaica and get to Malta, you know, Louis, like what they do. And I, <laughs> I spoke with my toes and they gave me some clear indications of some of the paths that I could walk if I stand on my square and take the first step. But I wouldn't be able to do that without really respecting and appreciating my toes and the role that they play in my life. So um, I started, <laughs> I started, um, yeah, really appreciating my toes. And then from there, everything that they connect to all the way up to the, you know, to the crown. And um, I think that was my biggest achievement of the year because then that just opened up the gateways for me to just do more with what I was currently working on. That because there was restrictions, I could then just really, it's like, oh shit, I've got all this free time. Yeah, I would have been teaching in schools, you know, doing this, doing that, whatever I would have been doing, and I was like, "Oh, I can just hang with my toes in the forest <laughs> <laughs> and get more of those downloads that I was getting that enabled me to say, hey, let me create talking slot.' Yeah, you know let yeah. me create video, let me create content that you know really serves me. Like it's an achievement that I'm making for myself that you know complements the lifestyle that I want to live and supporting other people that I want to build and connect with and continue to spread the spores in that way so you know that was you know what it allowed me to do and you know it sounds um different to some people but it's like you know 2020 was a great year for me man you know and many others in my circle you know of you know self-discovery self-development and all that stuff because I said me and myself and others don't really pay too much attention and serve the system the matrix in the way that others do that it may have been more fear-based it may have been more scary for others being in the <laughs> all the things that were happening it's like i kind of always lived in that world as i said this is not the first time i've seen a black man be killed by the police or black people marching you know all these things that yeah. trigger so to yeah. speak i was triggered in my teens basically you know so i started to do that kind of healing work on myself before and i got to a point where i could then really focus and channel the organic technologies of the forest inspire others to get to the forest you know and yeah. utilize it for what it is and I just really think that if this didn't happen in the way that it happened I definitely wouldn't have been doing that and I wouldn't have discovered my toes in the way that I rediscovered them it's funny you should say about toes because I swear like just I swear it was yesterday uh having my shower and I'm like washing between my toes and I was like Thank you so much. You have carried me through so many places. Like, and I was having a dialogue with my toes. So mm -hmm. I, I can really resonate. <laughs> I can really resonate. That's and exactly how it was. I was like, oh shit, I got toes. <laughs> And it's like, yeah, man, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you take care of, you know, you wash your face every day. You do. Yeah. Things, I just neglect my feet. And I was like, yeah. my feet, my feet. But like, no, you know, when your feet is broken down into different parts too, like appreciate yeah. each individual toe. And yeah, I got, I got all into that. And funny enough, <laughs> when I was in Malta, I, I treated myself to a foot job. <laughs> just for you. <laughs> some feet <laughs> oh someone else has on the foot no not that kind of foot so you had yeah, a foot let's make that clear yeah <laughs> so when, like, because the toes they spoke to me again it's like yeah you you have been acknowledging us more you, you know you do you've been doing a marvelous job but hey why don't you go down to one of those places where you can get someone else 
to look take care of your toes yeah you know and do and i'd never uh, you know i don't I, you know i'm a man and i don't really do i just yeah. most I do is scrub the feet in the bath quickly and, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, you know <laughs> go pound shop get one of them 99p files and stuff like that's the most that i would you know that <laughs> be doing but um i was like no i'm gonna go and invest in my feet but it was mainly the toes it was like yeah and i told her listen you, you better know what you're doing. <laughs> this isn't just any feet, foot job. This is going to be like a special assignment that I've got for you to help me with. And like, she was really nervous as well. She's like, I'm not the foot specialist. There's a foot specialist. I said, no, but today's the day. You know, today's the day. And you're going to be given a permit to work on my feet. And it's deep now. So it's like, she drew blood, man. That's how. That's how much <laughs> I don't feel, she's like, oh, she's all that. <laughs> But I was like, there, yeah, she's done a good job. And then by the end of it, I felt my feet. I was like, oh, shit, I've not felt my feet like this. I said, my <laughs> my feet felt like I was nine months old. Oh, wow. You know, them ones there, like, they have never been that smooth and that <laughs> She's done all the stuff that, you know, I normally see ladies and women doing. I didn't get no nail varnish and shit. But, you know, she done nah. all the filing and done yeah. it. Yeah. was like, yeah, man. And I... My feet were like, yeah, man, don't feel no way to just take care of us more regularly because yeah. Yeah, you've got places to go, you've got places to get to, like you said, you know, and, you know, if you don't take care of yourself in that way, then we won't take care of you. And then one of my elders, who's also no longer here, who made the transition a few years ago, he also reminded me before he passed, he was like, one of his last words was like, you're a Pisces. But also your body part is your feet. Take care of your uh... feet. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know, at the time, but like he came through and just reminded me, yeah, it's like, you know, take care of your feet. So I just woke up one day when I was in Malta and I, was, I spent the whole day, I was going around, you can imagine me, I'm in Malta driving around, <laughs> <Don't really laughs> randomly going to all these massage places, <laughs> saying, yeah, I want to get my feet, I want to get a foot job, get my feet. <laughs> They're looking at me like, no, no, we don't do that here. <laughs> I was funny, man, but yeah, so I was here. Yeah. But I eventually found a professional place like a proper place because there is some dodgy places in Malta and they thought yeah. oh, you, know, you know as you would know, not that you would know but you know there's places where you get that special ending like, <laughs> happy ending like, I think they call that yeah yeah and I just wanted to make it clear I'm not coming for one of those man I really just want to take care of <laughs> I'm not, I just want to and I'm them. out of here yeah I'm out of here so yeah I was able to achieve that and that was what I gleaned from last year I'm, I'm not even playing with it it's like my neck to my feet and my toes man but oh, that's your foundation. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Man. And and you got like uh the feet is the map to your whole body anyway. So like um yeah. that with reflexology and stuff, every part is yeah. connected to, and then obviously it goes into astrology and everything else. So yeah, and I need like, all my astrology and my reflexology people and all those kind of ology people yeah. to be able to break that down <laughs> for me as well. Yeah, but I do know. Is that I've picked up a, like certain practices this year, you know, like stretching body practices, and it doesn't matter what day of the week it is, what practice I'm doing, I start with stretching my toes. Ah. Oh. That is if and if that's all I do for the day, if all it is that I do a toe stretch, that's that's how you know how impressed I was by my toes when they started to communicate with me. <laughs> I've got you guys, man. I've got you guys. Wow. So every day I just do the toes. If I can't do no more than that, then that's all I'm gonna do. But yeah, the toes get a stretching and massaging and I'll take you from there. And then I've learned all that, you know, slapping the base of the feet and hitting okay. them, you know, because that helps send the right, I learned that in some of my Qigong practices that I've picked up and, you know, that then, like, if you do that, it's connected to every body part, you know, in the body. So it's like, you can just take care of the feet and you come like, out. In my mind's I am in my world, is like, I've done practice. <laughs> I've taken care of my whole body today and I cheat and don't have to do my... 100 press ups and squats and stuff. So, like, yeah, yeah. it's like the bottom of my soles and my feet. So, yeah, man, I feel good after that. So, what would you say, like, the most um, interesting or most, no, your most profound place that you went to last year that kind that you think has informed what you'll do this year? Is there any, any places that you went to? Because I think you went to quite a few places. Last I did. Year. And that's what I found crazy that during this so-called season where traveling was restricted, Ooh, I was me. invited to so many places. And then when I've done the Googles to see, well, can I actually go there? Am I allowed, you know, yeah. by the government? Like, oh, I actually can. So <laughs> I, 
I did do, yeah, I've done a fair bit of traveling. Bless you. Have you um, spontaneously combusted? Oh, shit. Oh, sorry, I sorry. spontaneously combusted, man. Just <laughs> I, I looked away and look, you sneeze. I looked away and come back and he was gone. <laughs> and I don't know if you know, there's a teacher, one of our elders, Bobby Hemmett, he spoke on that on one of his DVDs many years ago that there was a little girl, so dive into that, you know, there was a young girl in the America in America that every time she sneezed, she disappeared. That is so cool. I think that might be my superpower. Yeah. And, and everyone that watches Talking Slop are going to be testing it. <laughs> okay, so... Um, you, but so, yeah, I would say probably probably at Jamaica. Jamaica played a big part in, you know, because of the, the fact that I was meant to go to Detroit, which was going to be kind of, not just Detroit, I was meant to go to America. It was kind of like my coming to America tour. I'd been to America um, before, but, I, you know, I'd, I had been invited as well as lined up as well as kind of bullied myself into certain places where I was going to be traveling all around America, man, east, west, um, north and south. But um, I didn't get the opportunity to do that, which was challenging at the time. And because that was replaced with Jamaica, which was very spontaneous, it was literally over overnight that the decision was uh, made to go to Jamaica. But then with what's happened in Jamaica, it was just like the right place and space to be at that time. And I think moving forward, many things happened off the back of that. And, um, you know, as well as me doing my own personal stuff, you know, I've been invited back to do more stuff that I think is going to be really powerful for me and for my the people of Jamaica and for any people in the diaspora who's connected to where the sun comes from and wants to, you know, do their work in some capacity, whether that's healing work, working with mushrooms, as you know, and the psilocybin in particular, because it's legal in Jamaica. There's, you know, there's going to be, you know, things on the horizon that if I'm not a part of it directly, that I'm going to be able to point people in the right direction and say, yeah. where you can go to, where if you don't want to, I don't know, you know, there's loads of things potentially, you know, going on in the UK. Like you can go to Devon, go to, you know, Norfolk, and do retreats and stuff like that. And I get a lot of time where people saying, you know, I need something. What's it, FUBU? I need a FUBU. Yeah. Remember FUBU, <laughs> line? For us, by us. Yeah, man. That's what a lot of people say. So I'm like, yeah. boy, you're going to find some of that in Jamaica soon, man. That's for sure. Yeah. You know? So with that said, with all these kind of retreat stuff and health and well-being and, you know, psychedelic interests, you're going to find stuff in Jamaica that's boo-boo. And that makes yeah. me feel really good whether I'm doing it or just around people that are doing it. That, as I said, I can be able to point people in the right direction. So I think that's what I glean most through challenges of last year that I was able to explore and then we'll filter through to this year so you know like from yeah from as and when people are able to maneuver as they need to maneuver yeah you into that nigerian brother or sister who can <laughs> talk you up <laughs> and you can go to jamaica you know there's many things outside of the sunshine that will serve you well over there man so i was gonna ask as well like just following on kind of from that you know um because didn't you go to um have you been to parts of africa haven't you yeah um oh do yeah you know, do you know what oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad i could remind you <laughs> um what were do you know what um the parts that you went to do you know what their um like uh government policies or laws are uh, like regarding um magic mushrooms and stuff yeah, so for the most part, yeah, you know, the places that I went to, I didn't check out the legalities okay. of them. But what I do know that if it's not listed as it's legal, then it probably is illegal or it's just not of it's not on the radar. It's not of interest okay. when they've got laws in place that prevent you from doing it. Or, you know, I guess that at the end of the day, traveling from any place to any place where there's um, you're carrying illegal stuff, you're not allowed to do that, you know, but yeah. I guess that. You know of some types of mushroom they grow basically on all the continents yeah you know, they're there you know in the places that i travel to they're there but i don't it's not such a thing that you're going to get in trouble for doing it there because nobody knows and nobody really is that interested so i've not been to many places and of course for all the countries that you find in in africa i've only been to three 
Okay. And um, so this year I went to Egypt, the first time that I traveled to Egypt. So that was before all of this lockdown stuff. That was like in January. Um, oh, you meant last year. Yeah, yeah, last year. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah, last year, because Corona thing happened in March. Was it March, April yeah, that it kicked in? March. So I went yeah. to Egypt in like the end of January into February. And then it's funny that you, it's funny because when I arrived back at whatever airport that I arrived back at, that was when they had put the first posters up of corona going down in china oh really and it was the, like the i remember seeing the posters for the first time saying if you've just come from china you need to there was some extra stuff you need to do yeah and the rest of it i like bloody oh i didn't come from china so i'm not bothered about that and like that but that was the first time it was on my radar about wow. this whole corona thing and then um so yeah i was able to travel travel freely there and do what i need to do at the time and um yeah, I previously had been to the Gambia okay. as well as Morocco. Those are the only places that I've traveled to in Africa. So, um, well, not the only, amazing, but like only, but yeah, the amazing places that I've traveled to in Africa. And, um, but yeah, I'll be honest, I didn't check out the legalities and what the real status is because I've gathered that in a lot of these places, it's really just not on the radar. It's not, uh, yeah, just... yeah. You know, the, <laughs> you get, you know, the conversation is going to be about weed and hashish. You know, most of those places, and just like many places, like in the UK, weed and hashish is not legal, but it's readily available. Yeah, in Morocco, yeah. you know. So um, yeah, there was um, yeah, it was just as I said, if there's no barriers in me accessing what I need to access, then I'm not yeah. into the laws and stuff personally. Like, okay. You know, in, in that way, but if we're talking about in the comparison with Jamaica, where people are considering setting up yeah yeah that's what like i mean that. yeah i am aware that in morocco that there's people that do these kind of yeah do these types of retreats but i just don't actually don't know the legal status i know there's people okay. that do ayahuasca retreats in um in yeah. morocco you know it's funny enough i was you know i was communicating with one of the women today she's in morocco right now you know doing her doing her retreat and um yeah so i'm not gonna say her name because i don't know if, it's, if what she's doing is <laughs> or not, but yeah it's, it's happening you know that's what i do know it's happening yeah yeah but i really don't know she's gonna get in trouble oh if she's gonna oh sorry okay so i've got i was thinking you know like i was watching like some of our um last talk slots up here and um I, I asked you a question about the significance of funk. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you said you were still discovering about, like, what the significance is. Like, you're still kind of on the journey. It's just kind of a newish thing. So have you learned any more about how significant this is to, like, you know... Definitely, definitely. Spreading the spores or the psychedelic yeah. movement in any way, shape or form. So I'm definitely still discovering. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, what I found out about the funk, the funk is like mushrooms. The funk is like God. Okay. You know, if I use those two principles and the point that I'm making is in, it's infinite. There's no um, end. There's no you. knowing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just experience <laughs> you know just letting yourself go to the one i made a post the other day the power of the one that's what bootsy yeah. and george clinton and those guys brought to the okay. table the power of the one and when people in the conscious community think of the one we think of the one the source god the goddess yeah. you know that kind of thing but <laughs> the funk and the power of the one is exactly the same as is as relevant as equivalent to all of those things as psychedelics and that infinite journey and meeting God in the infinite you know experience that you could have with God or the goddess however you experience it or source is it, it, it can bring you to source you know the funky source so it's not just it's hot a sauce vehicle. either <laughs> it's a vehicle so yeah vehicle one stop yeah man to the power one that's it it's one yeah. stop <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> As you saw, as, as you tuned in and you was like, what music are you playing? It's like, it's the funk, man. Yeah, <laughs> it was funk. good, actually. Yeah. yeah. It's like, don't, yeah. I, like, and I, I feel sorry now for people. <laughs> it's like, oh, 
you don't know about the funk. <laughs> it's like, you've not experienced the funk. It's like, ah, uh, that's like, like, you know, Kalinda used to say about, and others have said about the psychedelic experience, it's like not having a psychedelic experience is like living life and not having sex. You've missed yeah. the point. So if you've lived life and you've not been functified, you've missed <laughs> the point. I don't care, you've missed the point of life. So you better get functified. And anybody that's spent enough quality time with me since I've been functified gets functified. There's no yeah. way, there's no way around it. And you will be I'm, I'm not gonna lie, D. When I'm usually in my, my total regalia with like my beads around hair and my silver makeup, I'm like the other day I was in my car, yeah. And I looked at myself in the mirror with the beads around hair and like me um uh glitter. <laughs> I make up and I'm like, there you go. I'm a fun, I'm fun, I'm fun to find. I'm, yeah, I'm, I look like one of the people from the 70s. There like, you go. Almost. You get what I mean? Like, I, I swear, I just got that just like, on the yesterday. one. <laughs> on the one, on the one, I'll get you, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I feel sorry for anybody that knows me from the past. <laughs> Pre funk, it's like, you know, that like BC, <laughs> it's like, before the funk and after the funk. And if you just know me before funk, yeah, and you, you're waiting for the, the same character before funk, it's a, it's a rap, mate. It's yeah, he's not there no more. Yeah, it's, 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 I'm not the same guy, man, I'm not the same guy. Like the funk has done as much for me as psychedelics has done for me. Wow. That's how powerful the funk is. Wow. That's how powerful it's been, yeah. I'll say that, and I'm not even playing with that. Wow, and you're still discovering, and that's like yeah, even the yeah, yeah. like what makes it like, and you feel like that already, and you're still discovering. Now imagine psychedelics has played a big key part in my life in doing the same thing in that way. All right, but when you bring those two together, or 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 it was always about this this moment that the marrying of the two. That is the sacred union that yeah. I was looking for. I thought yeah. I was going to find it in a woman. All my life. <laughs> <laughs> Mushrooms a, and the funk. Boom. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Infinite orgasmic fucking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I want to bring that into more people's lives simply because, like, when you asked before about, oh, so what role is that again? in your life and what the benefits and I keep saying oh, it's allowed me to drop my load you know it's allowed yeah. me to, you know and then you add fun with that man then you got me talking slop like this isn't it That's what I'm saying. You, just, <laughs> you get a, a more free liberated Darren the Baron than yeah. you would have ever got free funk free yeah. psychedelics as I said like I was that serious <laughs> conspiracy theorist yeah. but, uh, all that is like hold on a minute let's bring the funk <laughs> <laughs> And every morning, I'm telling you, there was like, so oh, when was it? I'm tripping now. Oh, yeah, it was a few weeks ago. It was a few weeks ago. Was I in Malta? I was not too, a few weeks ago. I felt myself going into this dip. But it took a few days before I realized I was in this dip. You know, this little dip. Uh -huh. And I was telling somebody, man, I'm in a, I'm just not feeling. <laughs> I'm not feeling myself, you know? <laughs> I'm not feeling myself like for a couple of days. It's like, yeah. it's, they're like, what's up? You know, have you argued with someone? You know, has this happened? And I was like, who've oh. been talking to? Who's like low in your vibration? Yeah, you know, is the negative beings from <laughs> the lower dimensions <laughs> messing with you? I'm like, no, 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 I don't know what it is. And then um, it took like, and I, I have to quote Bootsy Collins now. Oh, what a difference a day makes. <laughs> <laughs> because the following day I spoke to that same person I says and like how you doing I'm like oh my days I'm on top of the world and they're like oh so what happened I says I wasn't listening to no funk <laughs> I said I just like I've been listening to other music but I just said yeah the, like the original funk because yeah. in, like, I, like, I've got my playlist I've got my funk playlist and all that stuff there and then when, if I go from the original funk then I go back to the rap music and the hip hop music that I listened to that was inspired that was also yeah. inspired by the funk that West Coast and Bay Area and down south stuff they they were funk inspired and they've got the, the you know the samples in there yeah so I go to that 
But it's like, no, I didn't have the original. <laughs> that, and it's like, oh shit. And I said, oh, what a difference a day makes. Yeah. So, then, <laughs> so then the next day, first thing in the morning, sunrise, fun con. <laughs> and yeah, I was back, I was, I was back in business. <laughs> <laughs> I in business. That I feel you. I, I, I do I can definitely resonate with that that was like me because I'm on um Afro house Afro voodoo house though voodoo Ooh. that's that's more like that's uh, yeah, man, yeah, man. tribal that make me just no matter where I am I could be in the market D I am dancing I'm like what's wrong with all these people <laughs> like, it makes me like oh, I'm just yeah. having like and that's what keeps my vibration up and then couple that with going into the forest in that in that world. Yo, OMG. Yo, yo. It, it's a lot, you know. <laughs> yo. So that is like that is the holy trinity. Oh, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mushrooms, funk, and the forest. <laughs> If you bring that, I've only done that a few times. Well, I've done it a lot of times, but I've done it a few times with people as well. Okay. And you know some of those people. By the end, we'll be there from sunrise to the moon comes up and we be howling at the moon. <laughs> Literally. And then, then they know. And then they become functified. And yeah, it's a whole... It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful man. So really, uh, would you say that um, uh, psychedelics change your life? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But it's like many other things. When I say many other things, in the sense of like the Baron and other archetypes, like... Oh, they've always been in my life it's just like the awareness of it it's like so when they come through it's like i'm listening so basically why i got in more into funk was because like i know all of these songs but i don't know these songs yeah they I sound familiar they've got a familiar because most of the rap music that i came up listening to that moved me sampled all of this stuff yeah so it was like i was just going back digging in the crates as they were saying you know, i was going into the archive it's like oh shit i know ice cube used this public enemy used this you know yeah. Dre, you know, Snoop Dogg, all those guys, and then loads of guys that you just never have heard of, DJ Quick, you know, all the guys that I love and like musically coming up, that's what they was inspired. It's like you guys were <laughs> functified in it, and you, <laughs> you were, you were given the baton, and you know, and and took it and rap. That's what I'm saying. Rap. That's why rap music is so important and key because it kept the funk alive. It yeah. Kept the funk alive. It kept it alive. Even everybody knows James Brown and how he got sampled and we call him the, you know, the godfather of soul and all that. But he was the one, that's where Bootsy Collins come from, that part. Bootsy was, yeah. you know, the guitarist for, um, for James Brown. Wow. And he got called in at the last minute because James Brown was on some dodgy stuff. He weren't paying his artists. And they all, yeah. they all, done the, they all said, well, we ain't working with you. He's like, don't worry, man, I got, I got replacements. And he got Bootsy Collins and his guys in, but Bootsy was shining so much. James was like, we can't have two stars in this band. <laughs> <laughs> and then Bootsy went off and hooked up with George Clinton. Yeah. And the rest is history. Mate. Wow. And that was what then made what rap music that I was inspired by what it was to this day, man. You know, so there was a bunch of people that was just sampling James Brown sound, which was cool. But then that, like the West Coast guys, I've got to give it to a man, the West Coast and the Bay Area. They really delved into, you know, the, the funk in itself. And um, yeah, they kept it alive. So then when I went back to the original funk, I was like, man, I know all of this through the sample. So I'm a, yeah, I was there. Uh, we were the funk. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, so and so used this sample. And so and so used this sample. Yeah, yeah the familiarity like, of it. So then what is that? I'm tripping. Uh, I'm having experiences from when I was 13, 14, 15, 16, hearing it through the rap, it's taking me back there. And as I said, if you add that with the organic technology in a forest. It's a wrap. Yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me. So yeah, that's all I was thinking. How would you, if you were going to define last year in three words, because three is my number. <laughs> um, what would those words be? That's like my last question for you. So yeah, that's on the spot. And I just, if I'm just gonna shoot from the hip, I've got, I've been, got them for you in my head already, you know, B. Yeah, I, and I'm not gonna give the answers that if I had to think about it, I'll probably say after, ah, oh, this is what I should have said. Yeah, no. But now, yeah. I'll just go for it. I will say, 
funkified. Funk? Because <laughs> I got funkified with the Funk, Forest. Ah, oh, I got you got I got have four. Ah. Uh. <laughs> because now I'm caught between. But Sorry, I, meant... I said three, sir. <laughs> Freeze by the bar. All right, and if I say death, man, I got to put death in there. Death. Have to. Yeah. And if wow. you allowed me to have four, then I would have said toes. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, you know. funk came before the toes. <laughs> yeah, it was actually. I thought it was a day in the forest. This is into funk where I discovered my toes. See? That's how, like, that's how it, it was. It was one of those, it was one of those days, man. It was one of those days. Yeah. And um, I really, yeah, anyway, I'm saying too much, but yeah, I just was working. <laughs> I was working with the technologies, man. And it came through, man. And the forest, the funk. And just to let you know that the funk is also, so why I'm now in a new phase when I say a new phase, a new series of talks that I'm about to present, as I mentioned, like the Asian goddess one, I'm going to do one on music, psychedelics and music. Have to. Because on my journey in doing the psychedelic circuit and going to bloody, you know, these psychedelic conferences, festivals in particular, they always do these, you know, oh, we got a psychedelic music, you know, a space or a place or a psychedelic festival or psychedelic music. And it's basically always psytrance. <laughs> Oh. Sounds a bit abrasive. Right. So with that said, <laughs> for those of you who don't know and why the funk is so important, because the funk was birthed out of the LSD experience. Ah. Birthed out of psychedelics. George, Bootsy, and all those guys were in the booth, in the studio, dripping, baby. <laughs> as they <laughs> refer to it. And they talk about, you know, just blending in with the keys and the sound mixing board, becoming sound. And in the, this, in the birthing of the funk, it's written, it's recorded, just like the Bible, just like the Enuma Elish, just like the Quran and all these other <laughs> texts. The, the Torah. Yeah, the Torah. <laughs> the texts of the birthing of the funk, they say that they were gifted it and the funk came from outer space. And it traveled on frequencies gifted by the LSD experience. So they were able like to hear spurs. sounds, see sounds, and create new sounds that had never been created before. Well. Wow. So that, that, that needs to get spoken on, man. That, we can't let that get buried in history and say, ah, oh, it's just another genre of music. Or when we're doing psychedelic festivals or psychedelic music, not considered the funk as being the longest lasting psychedelic sound ever to be brought to this planet. Wow. So I had to get that one out there, yeah. I think you needed to. Definitely. I know when I've heard, um, I think um, the electric guitar, the electric guitar, when you hear it in like these uh, bunker delic type tunes, it sounds like the way that it moves, it's like you're almost, oh, I want to go up there with it. Do you get what I mean? Like, like in terms of like how you interpret it through my songs or whatever. You call it the mothership. Ah. Uh, Say no more in it. It's a spaceship. Yeah. It's, a, it's a spaceship. And if you listen to it right under those influence, the funk, the forest, put it all together, the mothership's come through, man. Just Sounds know like a bit, yeah. yeah. So cool. Well, thank you for like summarizing the year in in those three <laughs> words. Yeah, we're gonna allow the toes to come in. Still, I think we're gonna allow the toes to come in. Say that so, again. Well, I, I said we're gonna allow the toes to come in. I'll, I'll allow you the four. Right, right, right. Yeah, and and to be fair, because it was twenty twenty and kind of like an amateur numerologist, two or two is four. So hey. I give you the four. Yeah. <laughs> So what, what's new for you? What's good for the rest of this month? Are you, are you gonna be in London? You're gonna come, are you gonna be in London? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be dishonest. I'm not gonna mention or say anything because they're, they're tracking and tracing, isn't they? And doing, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want no one to know where I'm at or what I'm doing. I'll just I'll, I'll keep it at that. People just stay tuned in it. All the most I can say is just come back to YouTube, Instagram, news platform, and that's how you kept up how people will be kept up to date as to where I am, what's going on, and what's on the horizon. Ah, uh, you're really as fog, you know, around the world in 80 days. Something like that. Something like oh, that. Oh, Fraggle Rock. In Fraggle Rock, it was the grand the what was it, the uncle 
that would go abroad yeah, and yeah, 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 go yeah, yeah, and say, yeah. oh, where is he? They will be yeah. wherever. So that's how you're going to contact us through Insta and Facebook. You, you got it, you got it, you got it. <laughs> so, yeah, cool. Sis, big up on the See what you, you know what you do and what you've done. <laughs> it's probably one of the liveest. <laughs> <laughs> Get you talking, they're like, yeah, yo. Mate. Yeah, mate, yeah, mate, for sure, for sure. So I appreciate yeah. that. And I no appreciate problem. taking the time out as well to support me and bring that to talk. Uh, always, man. We love talking shit, man. That's like the best shit in the world. <laughs> all day, air day. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. So when you're ready, I can't, I'm looking forward to seeing your um, other um, interviews. Yeah, man. So I've got done. a couple new ones coming out on, you know, in the, in the week. So that's what people, yeah, it'll be just be coming out on the various platforms. And then um, the next talk will be um, February the 14th, as I mentioned, Psychedelics. Oh, I can't wait for that. Goddess Mysteries. Yes, that's going to be really good. I'm looking forward to that one. You'll have a front row seat. Thank you, sir. Thank you. you got, you're got you recording this, so yeah. <laughs> Tangible evidence, sir. Well, I'll edit it out if I... <laughs> <laughs> you're lucky I can't record it on this side, but I wouldn't anyway. All but right. yeah, it's all good, Dee. So all what are you doing for the rest of the evening? You're blessed, going to chill out. I'm going to chill. Look, so I'm going to put this in the thing. So let's officially end it and thank you and all that good stuff and appreciate you, sis. And um, we're out of here. Yeah.